pleased to present Patrick McManus from Next Stop. Uh, you caught my attention the other day. There's a neat little sign. Uh, we're in the middle of talking and then looking at what you're doing, but providing solutions for veterans. If there's a more important job around there, I'd like to know what it is. Patrick, tell us about the Next Stop program and what we really need to know about what you're doing and how we can support it. So Next Stop is a 501c nonprofit. Uh, we started out, started back in 2015, um, and we want our, our, we found out the a gap in services for E3s, E7s. So, um, so we started, and that's what, that's where our focus group is. And our main goal is to put talented veterans into the industry. Uh, industry here being aviation. So, uh, we probably we almost got 3,500 hires uh, since uh, we, our inception. Um, we would be able to grow more and more, and uh, we make, we, you know, it's one of the, my, probably my favorite job. My, my favorite job in the whole world is just saying congratulations to a veteran that I helped put to work. Wow, that's got to have some sense of satisfaction. Oh yeah, it's great. I'll bet. Where, where did this come from? How did how did this organization get created? And more important, how did it derive its direction? It was started in 2015, um, kind of in the in the energy uh, area. Um, with, some, with some initial seed money, and as you know, it was primarily in Houston, and then in Texas, and then uh, we expanded to uh, grow into Louisiana, Florida, and, we, and now we have we have some other work on the East Coast. I mean, we cover all 50 states, um, just but but our locations uh, where we have people, we all work remote, but Texas, Louisiana, and uh, North Carolina. What challenges do you see right now that? create the most difficulties or the most concern for you for veterans entering this kind of workforce? So one of the challenges that, that veterans are having when they're, when they're moving in from, from the, uh, uh, into the civil, civil, uh, excuse me, civilian aviation is sometimes there's uh, the, cert, the you know, certification. So, you know, there's, they don't get AMPs, when, they don't get AMP licenses when they leave the service. And so sometimes the requirement is to have an AMP. The good thing about uh, the uh, aviation electronics is they can get their certificate underneath the, underneath, the, underneath the company. So that's always a good path. That's one. Of, that's one that's a good path for them. Yeah, Rick Perry was talking today about the amount of power one uh, one forty five repair stations have to bring people into the community, train them, and ultimately certify them. Yes, and that's and that's what we're trying to do. Is, is you know if I get if I get uh, an AT or AE. Or, uh, or the other branches equivalent, and they're once, they want to stay in aviation, I send them over to the Aero Careers website, uh, try, to, try to find a company on there that uh, is an AE member, and then try to introduce them over um, and see if they're hiring. I would assume that businesses are pretty receptive to a pitch for a, a veteran finding a job. Yes. Especially uh, when they're dealing with millennials these days, and <laughs> let's not go there much. Yeah, so, you know, the great thing is a lot of them have veterans on their workforce, and so they, they see the value in having veterans working for them, the, uh, the quality of work, um, the timeliness, the, the amount of uh, skill they already come to the table with, and they're, and they're teachable, they're trainable. So, you know, they- Or they, else. <laughs> or else, yes, sir. Um, so it really makes a difference. And so when, when, they have, when they have veterans on their workforce, then they see what the value is, and they, so they want to bring more on. So. It's uh, so it's basically just trying to make that match. You know, you want you want to hire veterans. We have veterans. They want to live here. Let's let's make it work. Well, the the industry seems receptive, but we're fairly conservatively oriented, so it's very pro military. Um, I can't imagine that uh, there's a company out there that wouldn't be uh, receptive to a pitch. But where are the where are the shortcomings outside of a lack of certifications? Is there a transition problem, or for that matter, uh, is there a training problem in regards to making the transition from military to civilian? I mean, there's, there's, there's so many resources out there. Um, you know, especially if a, if a veteran can get into a company that will, that, will, that will help them get certified or get a license. That's always that's that's always helps remove that barrier. Um, but there have been a lot of leaps towards making it easier. Uh, for instance, the DOD Skill Bridge Program. Mm -hmm. If, uh, if a, a company wants to bring a active member, uh, an active military member who's separating uh, in as an intern, 
work at work with them with a, with a, hopefully the opportunity for them to get hired there. They can almost uh, six months to three months out, so they'll have a they'll have a veteran comes and works for them, they're their intern, show them the processes, maybe do some training, right? And when it, when they and when they hit terminal leave, they could get a, they could be offered a job. So you already tried the person out, they already know your company, you, and you can offer them a job. There's no obligation. This is a memorandum of agreement between the Department of Defense, their commander, and and the uh, the company. I found that some of the services have been very good about helping uh, their members transfer, uh, excuse me, transfer skills and certifications in some cases. Yes. I have two nephews that served in the Navy, eh, you know, our black sheep, what can I say? I understand. Uh, both in SAR until one transition to uh, unmanned aircraft. Yes. Got out, found the job of a lifetime is actually in South Korea right now, uh, working with unmanned systems out there making stupid money doing great, but there were programs at the time that really accelerated the process of getting them to in front of the people that were necessary. Are the services really helping these transitions? Are they doing enough, and who is or well, isn't? You know, every service is a little bit different, um, and every and it's, it's, also up to, it's, also, it's also up to their command. So, you know, that, that, that's from the, from the, uh, from the, uh, from, from the top down. It could be the local commander, right? On, if they're if they're promoting, you know, hey, training, and we want we want, we want you to land on your feet when you get out, uh, then they get that. I don't, I don't hardly ever see anybody not doing that for their their uh, members. Um, but the needs of the mission come first on that, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, are they dovetailing with you properly? I would think that there's an automatic uh, relationship to be built there. Uh, we we have a relationship with individual bases. Uh, gotcha. it's, it's, it's a, uh, the what they have is a TAP program, transition assistance program. Mm -hmm. That's a Department of Labor um, right. program. So they're 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 held in the balance of that of that program. But we have bases that we have a relationship with the bases where we can go and do employment panels, and uh, we can bring other we can bring AEA members with us and on, with those panels and job fairs. And so we have a relationship with individual bases. The department, but there's a few other organizations that do what we do at different levels. Um, so, you know, it's they can't they can't relate with everybody. Mm -hmm. So, and I assume AEA is helpful. Yes, I mean, there's over I don't know how many members are now. Um, there's so many members. It, it, it becomes great access, and, I, and everyone and almost almost every company is looking for somebody. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity to place a veteran with a, with a, with an AEA member in an aviation company is 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 pretty seamless. If, if we, if, we, if we can find where they want to go, there's a company there, we can make a match. Any success stories that come to mind? Well, right now, I have a, one of my candidates is at my booth, and he's moving from Ohio to Orlando. He's a Navy uh, AT, uh, has his bachelor's degree, and then he's also an uh, uh, IT. So oh he bought, he, on his own Double dime, threat. He came to visit friends on his own dime. He came here to the booth. He's had two interviews since he's been here. Uh, and I think oh, here? Yeah. Outstanding. Uh, uh, with uh, out, outside AEA, but they were yeah. aviation companies. Understood. But, but, but he's made several contacts here where I've talked to the owners and try to, you know, try, uh, try to get them or their, or their HR department, uh, whoever I can, try to get an uh, introduction here. So he, can, he wants to move to Orlando. Okay. So if anybody in Orlando is looking to hire an AT. Got to stay close uh, to the mouse. <laughs> uh, email me at patrick at next.best.org. I'll take care of you. There you go. What can this industry do to support you? What... Uh, What's on your to-do list or want list? What can we all do here to help support getting a veteran a good job after they've served us all so well? Well, they can register with NextStop okay. at uh, nextstopvets.org. They can register as a company, and uh, they can, you know, we have, there's, there's, there's several different levels there. But the basic is um, job description, location, pay if we can disclose it or not. It goes in our system. All the employment quitters, the people who do what I do. That job is now in there, so when they get an aviation person in there, it'll, it'll pop up as a job match, and we can try and we can try to get them hired. So the more the more jobs we have in the system, the more opportunities are for more for, for uh, aviation types getting out to find a job. Now, are you strictly limited to folks that are uh, out or on their way out at this stage of the game, or even folks are considering whether to re up or head head into civilian life? Do you provide that kind of guidance? Uh, I. I, I, I as an employment coach, that's one of my one of my hats I wear. 
you know. Sounds like you wear a few. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I always ask them, you know, have that honest conversation with yourself. What do you need? What do you want to do? And I've had guys like, you know, Patrick, I'm just re-enlisting. I appreciate it. If I want to go look, get back out, I'll get you. Or, hey, you know, I really want to go to college. Well, you know, we should go to college then. Maybe you go to college, get that, get, get that degree, come back out, and let's we'll, work with you. It can um, be done. It's, it's what the individual needs. It's, it's, it, I'm, in the, I'm, in the, I'm, in, I'm in this work to make veterans, to help veterans, right? Um, so whether I place them in a company or I, or I help them on with, uh, with something else that they need, be a, a job or opportunities or resources, that's what we do. Fascinating. For the folks out there, if you would, again, repeat how people can get a hold of you, either veterans or folks looking to support your work, how they can help, how they can contact, how they can get a hold of you to work with the Next Stop program. Sure. You can email me at patrick at nextopvets.org, or um, you could log on to our website and register as an employer at uh, nextopvets.org, and you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm all over the place. There you go. Well, I'll tell you what, um, near and dear to my heart, I'm happy to see this kind of effort and along with so many of the other efforts that are out there in various areas of the aviation. Aviation has embraced uh, our veterans, our brothers and sisters in so many ways, um, but there's never enough. And I, I'm so sorry, I, I really wasn't aware of what you were doing until recently, but I will keep up with you. And I'm gonna make you promise to keep me up with you news-wise, we'll be very happy to promote or uh, let people know when you've got announcements or news or events or programs that we can bring to the rest of the industry and the hundreds of thousands of folks that we reach uh, through Aero News and Airborne and all of our other programs and hopefully help you a little bit. All right, thank you very much. Well, thank you and I appreciate your service, sir. Thank you. Aero News Network's coverage of the 66th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Orlando, Florida, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.